History is full of examples of conflict between humans, but this conflict has roots that go back into the time when modern humans battled archaic humans for domination of the planet. Evidence suggests our forefathers colonized the world in an ancient form of manifest destiny, wiping out less advanced humans along the way. On this channel, we've been investigating and piecing together small pieces of a massive puzzle that has led us in the right direction, all while looking for answers to questions about human evolution that mainstream media hasn't been able to adequately address. We discussed evidence of early modern humans in Southeast Asia 120,000 years ago in recent videos, much earlier than the supposed out-of-Africa hypothesis would suggest. Indeed, these are long-standing puzzles for paleoanthropologists. During excavations in the 1930s, one of the most promising sites in the hunt for the archaic humans in Java Indonesia yielded numerous fossils of the hominins. The characteristics of the skulls and other bones indicated that the individuals were among the most evolved of our species. But dating the material proved difficult. In fact, more than 107,000 years ago, a group of archaic humans died in a mysterious mass death, and this is their last appearance in the fossil record. Some call them Denisovans, but evidence suggests they are the enigmatic southern Denisovans, so we'll just call them Denisovans in this video. Some viewers may take offense at the term archaic, but we will use it for simplicity. Researchers discovered Denisovan fossils on the Indonesian island of Java that belonged to a population that died between 117,000 and 108,000 years ago. This is the last known appearance of these archaic humans in Java's archaeological record. The individuals appear to have died in a mysterious mass death, and their bones were washed downstream in a flood. Previous estimates of the age of the fossils ranged from half a million to less than 30,000 years old, owing to the site's geography. The Java bone beds are located on a terrace near the Solo River in central Java. Slices of land eroded and were rebuilt as the river's course changed over time. In short, things became jumbled. Researchers have now painstakingly recreated a regional chronology for Java, charting changes in the river's course as well as the topography of the surrounding hills. The researchers also used a variety of dating techniques to determine the age of the fossils and the material that accumulated with them, such as quartz grains and pumice. As a result, the Java Denisovan fossils are 108,000 to 117,000 years old. The new, more reliable date range confirms that the Java hominins are the last known Denisovan members in the fossil record. The ages of the Java fossils also suggest that Denisovan and anatomically modern humans coexisted in the region. According to the age of these fossils, Denisovans lived at the same time as other human ancestors. More than 25,000 fossil specimens were discovered buried in river mud in Java including 12 skull caps and two leg bones from a particularly intriguing human ancestor, Southern Denisovans, also known as Sunder Denisovans or Ghost Denisovans. The Java fossils, mostly skull fragments, represent at least a dozen Denisovans who died at the same time. Other animals' bones were also discovered at the site, but no stone tools or other artifacts were discovered. The immediate area where the fossils were discovered was gravel or sand channel bars in the river itself at the time the bones accumulated there. Despite being washed down river and deposited at the site, the partial fossils show little wear and tear, which is to be expected from bones that have been tossed and tumbled in turbulent waters for a while. According to the evidence, the individuals died in a single flood event a short distance upriver. Or did it? Genomic studies of modern populations in nearby New Guinea have revealed that about 5% of their DNA is derived from Southern Denisovans. It could be the result of interbreeding with a late Denisovan population, implying that a sliver of this successful species lives on in the genes of some modern humans. Archaic human species existed for nearly 2 million years and spread throughout Africa and Asia, but scientists were unable to determine when the last of them died out. Nonetheless, science is bringing us closer to understanding our ancestors, even if we don't know where the human race is going. Attempts to determine the exact age of the Java fossils were ineffective because they provided a wide range of possibilities. Their death date was estimated to be between 550,000 and 27,000 years ago. However, a study published in the journal Nature has put the Denisovan S fate to rest. Anthropologists were able to identify a much tighter age range for these skulls by dating the surrounding river sediment rather than the fossils themselves. 
they discovered that the Denisovan people died in a mass extinction between 117,000 and 108,000 years ago. That means the bones represent Denisovan's last known appearance in the archaeological record. The new timeline also aids in the resolution of other mysteries, as it allows anthropologists to identify other ancient human species with which Denisovan overlapped. According to the findings, Denisovan survived long enough to interact with modern humans on Java, the world's southernmost known Denisovan site. The authors of the study claim that the skull caps and leg bones discovered in Java are the largest Denisovan collection found at any single site. In fact, the skull caps were missing parts of the cranium because the skeletons were damaged during a flood and washed down the river. Along with the fossils, researchers discovered bones from at least 64 mammals, which were also carried downstream. Without the flooding event, the fossils would not have been concentrated in such a small area. The fact that the bones were all swept downstream at the same time suggests that the 12 Denisovan individuals they died at the same time, in a mass death. If this was an accident, you would expect to find many children as victims, remarkably, the 12 skullcaps were all from adults. It was a disgraceful end for the species. Denisova hominins, along with elephants, tigers, wild cattle, water buffalo, tapirs, and hippopotamuses, most likely lived in an open woodland environment much cooler than present-day Java. They made simple flakes and choppers, handheld stone tools, as well as spears or harpoons from bones, daggers from stingray stingers, and andesite bowlers or hammer stones. They may have descended from, or were related to, Siberian Denisovans. The Java specimens most likely died as a result of a volcanic eruption. The species most likely became extinct as a result of the takeover of tropical rainforest, and loss of preferred habitat around 125,000 years ago. The skulls were damaged, but it is unknown whether this was due to an assault, cannibalism, the volcanic eruption, or the fossilization process. Major injuries were discovered in skulls 4 and 6, which archaeologists believe were caused by a cutting and blunt instrument, respectively. They show signs of inflammation and healing, indicating that the individuals survived the altercation. They noted that only the skull caps were discovered, with no teeth, which is extremely unusual. As a result, they interpreted skulls 4 and 6 as victims of a unsuccessful assault and the other skulls where the base was broken out as, the result of more successful attempts to slay the victims, assuming this was done by other humans to access and consume the brain. They were unsure whether this was carried out by a neighboring tribe or, by more advanced human beings who would have given evidence of their, superior culture by slaying their more primitive fellow man. Nonetheless, they admitted that some of the injuries may have been caused by the volcanic eruption. Archaeologist Ralph von Koenigswald proposed that only skull caps exist because someone transformed skulls into skull cups. Cannibalism and ritual headhunting have also been proposed as explanations for the absence of any remains other than the skull cap. This was reinforced by the historical practice of headhunting and cannibalism in some modern Indonesian, Australian, and Polynesian groups, which were thought to be descended from Denisovan populations at the time. Both ritual cannibalism and headhunting practices are rooted in magic and religion and are signs of man's spiritual awakening, though their precise significance is unknown. Human skulls must have been intentionally or unintentionally left behind. Perhaps the horde was caught off guard and fled, perhaps the skulls were placed to demarcate the area. Various tribes in New Guinea appear to demarcate their dwelling or hunting grounds in a similar manner even today. They evidently believe that the spirit residing in the skull can assist them in defending a specific area against intruders. Many later researchers agreed with von Koenigswald's interpretation of the site. Cannibalism claimed the lives of the Denisovan people. A vast number of different bones of all animal types were unearthed, he wrote, but of human remains only a very particular selection whose incidence was most certainly not natural. All of the skulls had their faces smashed and, with the exception of two, the bottoms of the skulls had been broken open. Von Koenigswald refers to them as skull trophies and compares them to the practice of modern headhunters, who eat the brains of defeated foes in order to gain the wisdom and skill of the defeated foe. The skulls were placed there to denote the location. It appears that various tribes in New Guinea demarcate their dwelling or hunting grounds in a similar manner even today. They evidently believe that the spirit residing in the skull can assist them in defending a specific area against intruders. 
cannibalism and headhunting in other cultures and ancient humans have always fascinated Europeans. In his paper titled, On the Crania of Ancient Man, German professor Hermann Schaffhausen wrote in 1856. The ancient Britons and Irish, as well as the Belgians and Finns, are described as savage. The Irish were voracious cannibals who thought it was honourable to eat their parents' bodies, and the Scots had been seen eating human flesh. As late as the 11th century, the most ancient populations of Scandinavia lived in the mountains and forests, clad in animal skins and uttering sounds that sounded more like wild beast cries than human speech. Their conquest and annihilation is celebrated. Man is said to awaken gradually. Cannibalism and skull hunting, with their magical implications, date back more than a million years. Cannibalism among hominids was first observed approximately 800,000 years ago. Some victims may have been eaten as part of a territorial defense strategy against neighbors, according to some anthropologists. Most of us are fascinated by cannibalism, and there are numerous examples of brutal and dark dramas that explore the subject, such as Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal. Cannibalism, however, has not only been practiced by bloodthirsty psychopaths. Hunger, warfare, and ritualistic behavior are all common reasons for eating human flesh and it hasn't been uncommon, many of our forefathers were cannibals. But why has remained a little mysterious? For over 100,000 years, our species fought archaic humans for supremacy. Finally, the deadlock was broken, and the tide turned. We have no idea why. It's possible that the development of superior ranged weapons, bows, spear throwers, and throwing clubs, allowed the stocky Neanderthals to be harassed from a distance using hit-and-run tactics. Perhaps improved hunting and gathering techniques allowed sapiens to feed larger tribes, resulting in numerical superiority in battle. Even after Homo sapiens left Africa 200,000 years ago, it took more than 150,000 years to conquer Neanderthal and Denisovan lands. In the Middle East archaic Homo sapiens gained ground only to be driven back by Neanderthal counteroffensives before being wiped out by a final offensive by modern Homo sapiens that began 125,000 years ago. This was not a Stone Age blitzkrieg, as we would expect if Neanderthals and Denisovans were either pacifists or non-warriors, but rather a long war of attrition. We eventually triumphed. This was not because they were less likely to fight. In the end, we probably just got better at military operations than they did. Why else would we leave Africa so slowly? because Neanderthals and Denisovans were already thriving in Europe and Asia, not because the environment was hostile. It's highly unlikely that modern humans met the Neanderthals and Denisovans and decided to simply coexist. At the very least, population growth forces humans to acquire more land in order to ensure adequate territory for hunting and foraging food for their children. In the end, an aggressive military strategy is also an effective evolutionary strategy.